best-selling Harry Potter books are a triumph of the imagination that did far more than break sales records for all time. They restored the world's sense of wonder and took on a magical life of their own. Although the series has ended, the story is not over. With remembrances from Rowling's editors, agents, publicists, fans, and Rowling herself, Melissa takes on a personal journey through every aspect of the Harry Potter phenomenon, from his very first spell to his lasting impact on the way we live and dream. Melissa is a former award-winning journalist who for the past six years has been the web mistress of the Leaky Cauldron, the most popular Harry Potter fan site on the internet. She's the winner of a Webby Award and the Yahoo People's Choice Find of the Year. Considered a leading media expert on Harry Potter, Melissa has appeared on MSNBC, CNN, and the BBC and has been featured in the New York Times, Los Angeles Times, San Francisco Chronicle, Associated Press, CNN.com, USA Today, and more. Please join me in welcoming Melissa Anelli. event where there's actually a published book so it's 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 enormously exciting I think I have 8,500 family members here um, Harry is a really important book to me in my heart because it represents a couple of years of work but more importantly the summation of many years inside this wonderful phenomenon and it's a real a real joy to bring it to people now and to hear them reacting to it and the emails that I've been getting and the messages and Facebook comments and <laughs> website comments and text messages and group postings and every other way that we communicate now. Um, it's been really fabulous, so thank you. The part that I want to read uh, to you, I've never read publicly before. It is, there's only been, you know, two readings, so really not, not, a, not a high watermark, but it is about the first time that I ever met J.K. Rowling. And um, I'm reading it because <laughs> I'm reading it because it represents uh, kind of the start of when I realized that I could make my life so much happier by sticking with Harry Potter, following my bliss, doing what doing what was right. Because um, at the time I was in a wonderfully bad job at MTV Networks and I was I was doing basically it, it started out seeming like a like a dream job like I would be working in editorial work but you know right out of college and MTV was hip and whatnot and I quickly learned that I would be working in a sterile creative services environment and then very quickly after I got my job there were a round of layoffs thanks to 9-11 and it, it turned into fetching coffee and lunch and and doing nothing editorial at all so I was pretty miserable and I had just, Leaky was starting to become more of a home, I was starting to become more absorbed in it, and I had just spent the release of book five with my friends, and had just come back to work, and um, you know, there's something really strange about working on a website that in such isolation, and then watching it go to millions, because you don't realize how many people are watching, or exactly who's watching. So I really wasn't aware of how popular Leaky was, or, or, who, was, or who was paying attention. And so I really, really wasn't prepared for what was coming. So that's where I'll start. The Tuesday after Book 5's release, I slipped behind my white Formica desk at MTV Networks early, dressed casually, just wanting to get through the day and home to my computer, where I had several hours of talking about the book to do. Already my hands were creeping to my personal email, to Leaky, to the Sugar Quill, to message boards. There had been a virtual storm of emails earlier between the people who had been at my house, and they were keeping me laughing while the morning geared itself up. All my coworkers were giving me excited, excited smiles, for, for by now I had become Harry Potter girl. They crept up to my desk when Denise was gone, asking me about the book, regarding me as someone who had just been giving a large gift, or someone who had come back from her honeymoon. Some were looking at me as though they expected me to have changed. Their inquisitive glances were met with polite smiles, and I answered phone calls and juggled schedules. Nice as they were, they were muggles. They didn't get it. <laughs> Good morning, MTV Networks, I answered cheerily while one hand used my mouse to scan message boards. Oh, hello, Melissa, it's Lizo. 
Levo! I shouted, attracting, attracting stares. I lowered my voice. Hey, what's going on? Lizo Mazimba was a television reporter from the Children's BBC who often reported on a potter and was a fan of the site. He usually called when there was some piece of tantalizing potter news to discuss or to tell me that he had a piece for us to link to on Leaky. Today it was just to wheedle me, the way he'd been doing for weeks, by implying that Joe Rowling read and liked Leaky and I should be at her post-release book reading in London. You should come, he said. The event's in two days. You'll get to meet her. Shut up, no I won't, I said, waving my arm as if to shoo a fly. I can't, oh, excuse me. I can't go off to England now. I have a job, I said, as a pile of filing was slammed on my desk. Disappointment and disbelief tinged Lizzo's voice. Oh, come on then. Just get on a plane. I'm telling you it will be worth it. I can't. I'm sorry. I'll see you soon. You soon, I managed quickly, hanging up the phone as I heard Denise coming down the corridor. I turned back to my filing and kept my head low, hoping for a pass. She went into her office and I exhaled and abandoned my filing in favor of email. So how was the book? The question sounded like it was addressed to a small child, and I, for the briefest second I looked around the office for one, before I realized that Denise was standing behind my computer and I was the small child. My hand had automatically qu clicked away from my email and onto my work document. I answered as best I could. It was good. She seemed pleased with herself, then held up a large manila envelope and dropped it onto the white ledge that I usually use to hide behind. <laughs> I picked up the stack, expecting copy editing or a story idea. My shower guests, she said. My hand paused at the cover of the folder. Excuse me, I asked as though I hadn't understood what she said. My shower guests, she repeated. She turned, went back into her office and shut the door. I put the folder carefully down next to my phone and stared at it. I grabbed my cell phone and was 30 floors, out and outside, 30 floors down and outside within seconds. The late June heat assaulting me, I marched up, up and down 44th Street between 7th and 8th Avenues, weighing options. I called Meg. Meg, I need convincing. All right, she said instantly, her tone brisk and assertive. Please convince me to get on a plane in two days to see the J.K. Rowling reading in England. Oh, she said, and the briskness left Meg's voice like I'd popped a balloon. Get your ass on a plane. Do it right now. <laughs> I just took some days off for the release of the book. If I just disappear, Melissa, you don't even get paid for days off. What are they going to do, dock you? I could be fired. Meg's tone went soft. Would that really be so bad, she asked, and a flutter of something like imagined relief coursed through me. Seriously, follow your bliss, Melissa. Lisa's telling you to go. He's saying you'll get to meet her. Has he ever lied to you? He says he reads the, she reads the site. I push, push all you like, but, she, but he's probably right. You know she knows about Leaky, and you're going to get to meet her if you go. She paused, probably for dramatic effect, a specialty of Meg's, then went in for the kill. If you do not get on that plane, will you regret it for the rest of your life? My voice felt small. Yes. Then what else do I need to say? Nothing. I clicked the phone shut and returned to my desk, then went to Orbitz.com, where I found a relatively cheap flight to, flight to London and an affordable hotel. My next bathroom break was used visiting Mimi, my former boss. She had been transferred to a different department, but I still saw her often. Mimi, can I stow a suitcase up here in a few days? I have to hide it from Denise so I can say I had a personal emergency while I go to London to meet J.K. Rowling. <laughs> she looked at me over her glasses and, la and laughed. Oh, hell yes. Two days later, I stood at the terminal for British Airways and John F. Kennedy International Airport. Operation Get Me Out of Work Unnoticed had gone as smoothly as I could have hoped. Denise left on time. I rocketed upstairs to Mimi's office, which she had left unlocked for me, grabbed my suitcase, and splurged on a cab. I called BK at the terminal, shot Meg an email before I left work, and informed my parents of my plans. They almost cheered. They watched me come home weary and angry for almost two years and were glad I was taking passive-aggressive action. <laughs> This support, above all things, made me feel untouchable. It reminded me strongly of the times my mother would just wake me up from, and inform me I was skipping school just so we could spend time together. I'd go back to school the next day feeling protected by an invisible bubble from any teacher's complaint. Still, this was the first trip I was taking solely for the website. I could momentarily forget that I didn't have a company backing me, that I was funding the trip out of my weekly pittance, and that Leaky was, wasn't an accredited news organization but a startup. I felt like a real reporter headed on a real business trip. I had, I had packed only business clothes, pajamas, and my computer. I had all my travel details printed in a blue folder that stayed in my hand to make me look more professional. I wore black and folded a sweater over my arm. I had no idea what the hell I was doing. <laughs> my hotel room was in a basement in Queens Park and was a teeny thing half the size of my college dorm room. It was sunny and cool and someone from Scholastic had left me a ticket for the event at the reception desk at a hotel in Chic Kensington. I would called Lizo as soon as I got in and he told me to wait at the hotel until he, until he got there. You ready to meet her, he asked, as soon as I hopped into the black cab. I'm not going to meet her. Maybe if I'm lucky, she'll answer a question on the press side of the red carpet. I don't know what I'm doing here. Why am I here? What am I doing? Anyway, 